Hey guys, it's Ginger Cook here with Acrylic Painting Monday. This is going to be a fun floral. We're going to be doing one of our old dead artists, uh, Odin. We've done a lot of his uh, before. But what I particularly liked about, what I love about that artist, Odin, he lived in the 1800s and painted just so many florals. He had such different ideas about what makes backgrounds. And so we're going to ask her the question, why study the old masters? What is it you can learn? Well, first, right off the top, you could maybe discover a different way maybe to put a background in your painting rather than just a solid color, you know, something that really is going to um, make your subject, in this case, a still life, you know, really pop. Okay, so we're going to do that. We have a, uh, some Salvador paints that uh, we're going to do a drawing for later on in the show from those of you who uh, filled out the uh, thing um, uh, the uh, what, what are they filling out, John? Well, oh, whatever. <laughs> From last week when you answered the questions, you when put you in the secret comment word. The comments. Comment and a comment. Put in the secret word. We will um, we doing that, and we're also going to show you some of the fun things we have coming up in the academy for you, and some other great tips while you're painting. So keep in track. You might want to take a pencil and paper out and maybe write down some of the things we're going to share. Um, might help you later. Just. Sometimes, even if you've heard it before, writing it down cements it in. That's what we're talking about. Ooh. Cement it in, write it, it down. It glues it in there. Yeah, let's try to have a little bit of fun. because we And we're going to talk about why you're good at some paintings and then you just try to do another one and it doesn't work out. Um, I actually had one of those this week where I was doing something. I was so upset, I just threw the whole thing in the trash. It happens to everybody. I'm going to tell you why and, and, and how to go about... Um, reframing your your thinking so this doesn't doesn't throw you off the wheel okay so let's get started here uh john i'm going to come on down i've got a 12 by 12 canvas and it's just painted orange and um and square i just these are fun i like the square ones well, and here's a here's a sketch of the um just the black and white of the of the picture from um odin and i just uh, what's neat is he's got this sort of kind of you see almost the table is circular behind him, but there's no hard line. Understand that when people paint with oils, okay, oils don't dry easily, so that they get kind of they're kind of one paint paint sort of skishes into another. As opposed to say a pencil drawing, we have a hard line and a hard line and a hard line, and a lot of times because acrylics dry so fast, a lot of you have a tendency to do hard line paintings rather than maybe put one wet color against another and let them sort of skish together. Hmm? Yes, skish. New, new term, am I skishing? Well, I think that sounds good. People say, what, what does Ginger want you to do? She wants me to skish. You're going, oh, good grief, that sounds terrible. But no, no, we just want some skishing. So here's our um, trans, I'm gonna just move the paint out of the way because I don't want to get the trans, here's our Sorel tra transfer paper. And um, I think that's the right side up. It never hurts to test. And uh, for those of you who are kind of looking, look at this thing. Look at look what I found. Is that cute or what? Can you guys see that? Tip it a little bit, yeah. Can that's you see bad. that? I found this is for makeup brushes, and I thought that'd be very handy in the bathroom. But then I'm going, look how well it holds. Just the paint brushes I want to use now. You know, not. You wouldn't want to dry them like this because you never want to dry a wet brush standing up. But I thought this is just handy for the things you're going to use. It's little and cute. Kind of now, neat, huh? Okay, where you have it. Okay, here. Hold on one second. Hold what? on one second. One momento. Sure. Okay, look at the monitor. Yeah. Oh, want me to put it here, 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 <laughs> here, here, here. here. I'll just put it out of the way for now. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you'd get it. All right. Well, you guys, you know, that is some handy stuff. I bought some grass last week. Uh, not the kind that you smoke, but the kind that uh, <laughs> that holds holds it's some fake grass you're supposed to put your brushes in. And it was kind of okay. It wasn't bad, but that, nothing, but that's not, that's so much better. This is really fun, and it looks like it would travel. As you guys know, we're going to be gone next month, uh, traveling up to Pennsylvania to do the workshop and everything, leaving this Wednesday. And um, uh, so we're we're kind of excited about that. Well, extremely excited, not just kind of. We're excited, 
I haven't seen the grandkids in, since COVID started. In a month of Sundays. In a month of Sundays. And we didn't see them that much because they lived across town. And, you know, and then, then the quarantine happened and all of that, right? So, oh, I started to test to see if I had this right. Yeah, I'm convinced you do. Yeah, yeah, I do. Oh, good. Yeah. So um, what I want to do, I'm not going to do all of these. I just want to make sure I have this main leaf like this. This big, beautiful, looks like a philodendron leaf, doesn't it, John? Yes, it does. Uh, I don't know that that's true. All we true. know is it's a uh, flower pot on a red background. That's what he called it. Yeah, flower pot on a red background. All right. He's as good and, as we are. Uh, traceables will be available on our website. So we know we've got uh, something here and something there. <laughs> and we got something there. And um, this comes around and we got something there and something there so, all right so we're i'm not I, the rest has to be background you guys so i'm going to trust that i know where the rest of it goes yeah so that's that's all i'm going to well, trace on reference you can look at see so that's all i'm going to trace on but but we did want to have that um on there so that we get the we're, this is kind of neat because you're not you're not looking eye level at the flower pot. You're looking down at it. You see, so the oval's a little bit different. If you're looking at an eye level, it would be very skinny, yeah? That's true. So, uh, you know, I, sometimes just, um, sometimes just if you're painting something that everybody's painted a million times, like flowers, maybe just a different point angle of the flowers. You know what I'm saying? Just a little different angle of the view might be helpful. Yes? Yes and yes? So those are some things to keep in mind when you're painting stuff. It's what are the what's the angle? So the background he did was um, pretty cool, and um, I've got just a variety of colors out here. I've got some of the Salvador reds, and I've got a color called um, uh, permanent maroon. If you have a Lucerne crimson, that would be good. Otherwise, if you don't have any of those things, you might want to use um, a naphthal red and a little bit of ultramarine blue, but kind of a looking for kind of a wine color. We've got a lot of oranges in here too. So, you know, cad red medium, cad red uh, a light. Those are some good colors, some yellow. Uh, and we're going to use a large brush like this. And what I want to do is I want to go down and across. You see this? Down and across. We want to sort of do a weavy pattern. So let's just start with a little bit of burnt sienna. Okay, like this. And you see, I'm going to down and across. There's no water on this brush. Okay, just like this. Burnt sienna is a very translucent color. And let's take a little bit of yellow, come closer to here like that, and maybe a little bit of orange, come like that. There we go. Down and across, down and across, down and across. Okay, let's take some red. That's a good color. It's a bright red here. That's it's a little redder than I want. Let's put some yellow with it. And maybe some uh, nap. Oh, cad red. That's a good one. Okay, down and across, down and across. So this is just a, a plethora of beautiful reds and oranges in this. Here's some. Here's that light orange from Salvador. That's pretty. Like that, and just kind of coming down like this, just down and across, down and across. You're just weaving that in here, just maybe a little bit of the burnt sienna now, barely touch this. And uh, and while I'm doing this, I'm going to shout out to my mods. I hope Julie, Judy's feel, feel, feeling better. She, she wasn't feeling too well, wasn't sure she could make it, but we all wish her a well, speedy recovery. Uh, I'm eating chocolate, so she's doing better. Oh, well, there you if go, you're right? you're eating chocolate, you're on, you're on the mend. She, well, that's true, isn't it? So, and Absolutely. then uh, I think I think uh, Liz one and Liz two are here. I think that Liz said she'd be here. She's been yeah. Liz one has been camping. Um, wonderful weather, I hear. And uh, what wonderful <laughs> weather! She, she stuck with it. Most people would have would have gone home, right? <laughs> they stuck it out, right? You know, um, kind of reminds me of James Mishner's book Hawaii. I was talking with that to somebody today. If you guys ever read that book years ago, and what was so fun about it was that. Um, he was describing at the time that there were a lot of missionaries um, from different religions, particularly back east uh, over there. And his, his, in his little book, um, the, the missionaries were um, uh, sent clothes uh, from the congregation where they had left, you know, their friends in the congregation. And um, 
Some of the clothes were winter clothes, even though Hawaii doesn't really have a winter. None of, none of the congregation had been there. So they felt obligated to wear this wool, uh, these wool clothes in winter, whether it was 100 degrees out, because that was winter, because, I mean, that was the temperature. And, uh, but I, I, there. So I'm just this little caveat to Liz here. I really think that I just, we've moved past Hawaii and weather's bad, right? Doesn't sound like a fun thing to do. But anyway, I'm just having fun with you, but sort of. Anyway, I'm keeping this. See how I'm just kind of weaving some lighter yellow in, kind of some brighter oranges um, around where the, the flowers are going to be. And here's a little of this alizarin crimson. I want to show you that. See how dark that is? I'm going to come down here in this area around the bottom of my leaf and pot. That's that maroon color. But if you had alizarin crimson or a darker uh, red, you could... Um, you could do, do um, like I say, ultramarine blue and and red would make a pretty dark color. And um, as soon as we get up to here, we're going to go into the reds and just try to have a, a separation between, kind of like, what, what am I telling you, a fuzzy line between here and here? Yes, yeah, see? So it's there, but it's just uh, not so obvious. And here's a little bit of this darker color here. And remember, ultramarine blue and red would, would make something similar to this. You're just looking for kind of a, a dark wine red. And there's some of that color right here behind the pot. And then we're just going to take some other reds here and go on up the... I'm going to wipe this off my brush. See that? I'm not rinsing. I'll just take some kind of bright red. Ooh, that's too much paint. Look at all that paint you got well, up let's there. Let's just take some of that off. <laughs> and just, there, there we go. It's just going to wipe some of that up like this. See, like uh, kind of up and down, so you you know it's darker around here. Let me show you a little ultramarine blue and show you what that does. See how that will kind of the blue will kind of almost make a brown color too. Yeah, it so it out. It um you can you can add a little bit of blue if you need something say darker right here. You can still add a little blue, and that will definitely um uh, d darken this this area. So you learned a little bit about color mixing. Uh, today, just by doing this, I want to say um, say hi to Andrew in um, in Haiti. I know that he likes to do flowers. I think this is if you're watching Andrew. I think this is might be one you would enjoy doing. And I think this could be done. Somebody always says that. Well, when can you do it larger? Can you do it bigger? So that kind of stuff. And yeah, I think you could. But basically, what you want to do here is. Um, uh, play with the colors. At some point, I would have to dry, and then I could do another layer. But I'm I'm pretty happy with this right now, just just like this. And then I might dry brush when this dries. I might just dry some other kind of drag some other colors over this. It's a good foundation. You know? So that's kind of cool. So you you want to get that in now. Interestingly, the pot is sort of this red orange color. So um. We're going to paint that in like this. Now, when we think about his choices of colors, let's take a little bit of a um, like burnt sienna. Remember, that's your um, kind of a translucent color, burnt sienna. When we think about his choice of colors here, what we're struck, at least what strikes me, is that... Um, it is such. It's. It is really. Um. This. These. This whole painting is going to be just almost all reds except for a few greens and a few whites, and so green and and red are complements, and so the majority of this is in the red tones, and then the then you've got the green as the as the as the punch color, which is kind of so extremely well designed, and then in this area in the center he's got. Um, um, well, kind of like a burnt umber, I guess. Um, just get out a uh, burnt umber color. Uh, here's some little Salvador tubes of paint here. Let's just find a little burnt umber. Uh, that's just sort of in the center here with a little, there was a little bit of yellow oxide with it in the center right here in the middle of his pot, right in this area. He's got this color. And see, I've got all this paint. Now, see, I'm going to mop some of that up. 
I'm not going to just leave globs of paint on there. And then I want a little white. And I'm going to lighten this up a bit. Put some paint on the brush and then just dab it on there like that. There you go. Just tap that in there like that. All right, he, he's got that. Okay. Cool, right? So you think, well, that doesn't seem too hard. No, right? Didn't, did it? Let's take a little bit of the burnt umber and the red, and I'll show you what I'm talking about here. I'm going to come under this pot with the dark line. Let's take that lizard crimson, too. That's a nice, or that maroon color. There you go. There's a dark line underneath the pot. And there's something back here, too. That's dark. And then, we, like I say, we've got something dark right there. And we haven't put any of the highlights on the pot yet, but we know that right behind this leaf there's a shadow like that going up the wall. And there you have it. That, yeah, it looks great. I mean, you, you know, this is still a little tacky, so I don't want to do too much. If I were, for instance, take some yellow, here's a glob of yellow. You don't want a glob of yellow. And here's still a glob of yellow. It's still too much. <laughs> Quit globbing. You know who you are, right? <laughs> just quit globbing. We have a new group of people. We know who you are. <laughs> quit globbing. Look at how I can just drag this down here over the canvas like that. Put a little on the brush really flat. Wipe off most of it off. Hold it flat. And just sort of drag some yellow. Like almost. They had, like his canvas was probably very linen-y. Um, you know, maybe like a rough, coarse, fun linen. So when you did this, you saw a little bit of the weave in it. It's pretty. See, like that. You just kind of come up and down like that. And, um, you know, something like this. There you go. So I'm doing that. Now, this little brush goes in water. And let's find another one. Uh, all right. So I want to do, I'm going to, I think I'm pretty safe in doing the green. On yeah, the leaf. leaf. So I've got, um, uh, this is Stalo green, but you probably, there's a bunch of greens in Salvador that would work too. And a little blue, kind of a Salvador light blue and Thalo green. And I think I'm going to come here like that. It's a little too blue, so a little bit more green here. And I'm going to go ahead and make the curve of this leaf. And I've got it that's a little on the blue side. Let's put a little more green in it. Maybe a little yellow. There we go. Okay. And I'm going to come around here like this. And uh, it's a heart shape, so you want to leave room for the heart where this leaf comes down in a heart. Uh, John and I watched the most interesting show the other night on, um, on uh, Netflix, for those of you who get it. It was called Our National Parks, except it wasn't about our national parks at all. It, it was, was about the National, national parks. parks of the World. It really was titled very poorly. And we were just glued to every episode. Really good. Highly recommend it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to rinse the brush. Wipe it off. <laughs> Woo! Now I oh just got goodness. paint on me, didn't I? Yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to wear the paint tonight. Oh, there's something different. Yeah. All right. So what I want to do is I want to, I want to do a little erasing. So rinse, wipe, swipe. I'm going to come around here on the edge of my leaf. And I'm just going to erase. Because I haven't dried anything completely yet. This is a steep brush. Stiff brush, not steep, stiff brush. And I want to erase like this. Some I want something a little lighter there. So it's kind of a rinse, wipe, swipe, and I, I have a choice. I could, because I have the orange underneath. You see what I'm doing here? Like the orange is coming off. Yeah, it's all right. Because I'm going over it a lot, and I'm, I'm going to rinse. It's kind of the theory, like the mopping the floor theory, right? Say like that. Just going to do a little of that. Might be just easier to use paint, but we we had to try this first since we had this neat orange background. See, see what we just did. See how you can when paint is a really is still wet, you can you have the ability to do this. 
just kind of you can you can pick it up in a couple places and uh, conversely we could also do this too we could just come around here like this and add this little kind of lighter gold orange edge too just i don't want to outline the whole thing but i want to just suggest that there's uh something going on just that there's a little bit of this edge here and i may have to put it back see i haven't dried anything so i would caution you if you're going to do this to dry it because i don't know if you'd have great success otherwise so here's our orange stem coming off of the uh off of the um pot here like that a little stem on the leaf and we've got a like a there's the rim of our pot coming around like that. It's a really simple painting. And I am really tired of coming up here and sneezing. I don't know what it is about this place that does this to me. Uh, it's the workload. I don't know, John. It's just so annoying. All right. So now I'm going to want a little bit of yellow here in my pot. This is dried enough. So I see how I'm going to kind of work this in here. Wipe off the brush, not and kind of mop some up. No globs here. Okay. Come in here like that. This all, you know, we have to layer, but you know, at a certain point, you've got to be able to dry it too. And I know I want it very dark right here, so I'm going to put a little blue here on either side of this leaf here. And then come back with our, our uh, second layer of our maroon color okay and do i need another rag i think so that one's all wet and messy now i think i'll just grab some other colors all right so now i've got some this is still wet so can i do anything with this green now this is the thing you've got to ask yourself are you drying enough for instance, I know that this is a, um, if I want to keep adding colors to this green, I'm just going to mix colors on the canvas. I'm not going to get anywhere. Okay. So this is when you've got to dry. So John's going to take a minute and shut off the dryer. I'm going to dry, blow my nose, and we're going to dry this. Okay. And then we'll carry on because I want to put these other green leaves up here too. All right. And what am I doing? I don't care. Just dry it. Talk to him. Whatever. <laughs> I really don't care. <laughs> I'm drying it now. Boy. Pulling an attitude on me today, is she? Hey, we have a artist I'd like to give a little shout out to. This is Monique Vanrique, I believe the last name, out of um, overseas, over across the big pond. This is her rendition of Andy Pandy. Did a fantastic job on this particular painting. And she gave the uh, claw a little bit. You know, she, she has the bear hugging the tree a little bit further. A really a beautiful job on this. And uh, congratulations on a job well done, Miss Monique. We do appreciate you uh, participating in the painting of our tutorials. Did she send this one in for a little art coaching? She just said, she's done. am I back on? No. Are you done? Yes. Oh. Then to... you're back on. Yeah, Monique sent in to share because a lot of times people will send it in just to have, have me have a look. If I'd seen anything, I would have told her. I thought it was beautifully done just the way it was. But then I can share it on Pinterest. If you want your, if you're an Academy member and a red or, or purple or blue member and you want your stuff on Pinterest, you have to send it to me through personal art coaching. It doesn't go up there. Yeah. And, and, and do it doesn't just like necessarily. Monique, just share it. Yeah, so she was sharing it with me. And, you know, it was just. Um, I was just so so impressed with how well she had done it, okay? And, and really, truly, it was just marvelous. I like the way she had the bear hugging the tree. Oh, I did too. There was just so much about that painting I really loved. All right, so let's 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 do this and make sure we have a, we need a, a, a this is what we call a hard line right here, okay? So, um. I call that a chalk line. Yeah, but that's really what, that's your hard line, John, and this is important when you're painting something like this. Be able to come in here, like this, next to this pot, and get that curve right, like that, get that curve. And this is where it needed a second 
layer of paint. Sometimes people just don't put in enough paint. And here's a here's something dark in here. Here we go. Let's just come under here like that. Um, so I think we would darken this, and we've had something pretty dark along this side of the leaf too. So I can sometimes a second coat can makes a difference. Yeah. And then I want to take some of this green color and maybe just a little yellow oxide. And, and just start putting in some leaves. I know that I've got a leaf down in here like this. Okay. And then we've got some kind of this is where this is where the abstract, you know, starts happening. Um, and then, you know, he's got their it's almost Chinese in the way that they're painted. Um, here's sort of a ooh, don't like that color. Oh, it's like the yellow oxide or red in this. Um, it's like I say, it's almost a yellow oxide uh, style of. Um, it's almost a Chinese style of the way the leaves are. Okay, that was very popular back. Um, art was Van Gogh did it. Monet, a bunch of them. There was a time during the eight, late eighteen hundreds where everything uh, Oriental was very fashionable, including the dishes and people wanted stuff like that, and so they all you know, kind of got into that style, what they imagined that style of painting was, okay? Which is not quite the same thing, but it's what they imagined that style of painting was. So I'm just putting in these leaf shapes right now like that. Now, like I say, the the um, traceable for this, you know, the actual image is going to be on our website tomorrow. We'll get that in there and uh, for you. And you can then double check and see if this is how you see it. Okay, let's just make this a little darker. You can always put red into green to make something a little darker. Okay. And then there was this kind of nice little round leaf coming out of here like this. Okay, there we go. So you see how we're sort of building it up, yeah? And there was something here, this was sort of a, kind of a weird little colorful leaf. So there, it's all layers of colors. So it's not. I'm just kind of laying it in now, but I like that color. So do you ever ask yourself, I've got a color, I've made it. Where else can I use it? Hmm? So that's what you want to ask. Like for instance, I could maybe use that right here, kind of more of this grayed um, leaf color here. But not the whole thing, see? And there's not a lot of paint on my brush. Uh, that's the trick. There's not a lot of paint on the brush. And you want to be able to put paint on and then wipe it off. Because that's what makes these, um, uh, these, these old master paintings so interesting is that they're not just, uh, they're not just one color. There are a lot of different colors. And uh, and they're layered, and you can get in the habit of layering them, not just trying to do it all at once. We had somebody uh, once that wrote to Dan and said they thought that the sometimes the tutorials uh, they got a little confused because if I'm bending over, if you're going to get a shot of it, sometimes I have to get my nose up to the canvas so I can see. So I, <laughs> even when I was thirty, I still have to be able to see it. So there may be times when you know, my head might be in the way for a little bit, but mostly it isn't. It should be enough at the point where you're trying some of these more complicated lessons. Um, you should probably be feel pretty confident about, you know, continuing the color on, I would think. Wouldn't you, John? I would think so. So any questions? Uh, not so yet, my queen. All right. So you see, I'm still working with this leaf, and it came out like that, kind of had this little kind of, I like the, the shape of this so much. Okay, so there's that one. So I'm just playing with the colors. They're all sort of like this blue. There's got some blue and some yellow oxide and some green and some white and just um, mixing this up here like this, layering it over. There you go. See, that's a lot of paint. So if I wipe that off and then just did this, so I didn't fill in the whole leaf, see? So, the, oh gosh, that's a good idea, isn't it? Let's put a shadow on this leaf right here. 
take that little purple color and put a little shadow right here on this one. So the purple and green do that. It's just something, maybe a little red. Let's get that dark. You don't want to use black. You want to use a color. You want to gray it with a color. Okay, let's see. It's a little bit more purple like that. Here's the purple. And there's something dark right here. With all and, those greens you were doing, what color green were you using? Well, I had phthalo <laughs> green and, ye and, and yellow oxide and uh, mm -hmm. yellows and uh, th that turquoise, you know, or phthalo blue, right? All those colors, yeah. And here's a little dark edge to this leaf right here. Okay, and then there's a little dark edge on this one. It kind of comes in like that where something ate it. I like it. Ooh. You well, you know, bugs happen, John, and, and um, as you well know, and they eat your plants. And um, I kind of like that he included that. He didn't make it too perfect. Uh, but he didn't put the bugs in like the other guy did. No, he didn't put the bugs in. And that, that sometimes there's, you know, there's like what I call overkill with <laughs> stuff like that. So now I want a little bit of lighter ground here. So here's the center of this. Now I'm going to lighten this up. Just a little bit of white and, and um, just lighten this up a little bit here with our, this is our little dirt pile where this plant is growing. Just, it's fun to see how, it's fun to do these because it's fun to see how someone else might interpret uh, something like this. Yes? Well, you kind of have to guess a little bit of what he's actually painting. Yeah, you know, you do. So, uh but this is kind of, this this if you have like a room where there's lots of this red almost could be considered neutral and interesting like a brown even though it's not it's pretty bright but it's it's not so there was a couple of places where he had some um um uh glazing and in order to get that um we'll have to let some white dry and then come back to it. But I want to, I know it was a little bit lighter around here in this here like that. And let's see if I've got enough. There's a little bit of orange on the edge of this leaf there. That, that, I don't think we needed to erase it. I think that, that, that's that light orange that's in the Salvador kit. And that's a nice little orange here. See, I'm using the brush and bringing it toward me. And now uh, you've got this coming down here like this. And you got this little just kind of just, wow, how cool is that? Just fun. All right, now back to the reds. Want something? Here's some red and um, brown. Let's try that. I want something darker right here. That dark, maybe. I'm not sure if I want it that dark. Let's try a little cad red with it. All right, so that's my. My more of my shadow part again. This is kind of coming. Brush strokes are down, kind of still woven like you saw the, um, the the way we did the background. We're still weaving them. So now there must be a question or two, John. There must be. But there is. So. No. No. Okay. All right. So we'll let that dry. All right, so we need some more stuff here, and one of the things I want to want to have is zinc white. And I wasn't sure where I had any, so I'm going to put some right here. Zinc white is your transparent white, and if I use that, say with say yellow, that'd be like your cad yellow medium. And then wipe all that off. I might be able to put some on here like that. Let's try a little more zinc, just a little bit on the brush, hold it flat. Yvonne would like to know, have you ever painted on a black gesso background? Yeah, we've got a bunch of tutorials on that. You know, I don't think people have seen half the stuff. I hope you guys are, are reading our our newsletter. Um, and um, that we put out every week. It's called the the YouTube Gazette. And I hope you guys are looking at that if you're on our mailing list for that. John... John includes tremendous tech, tech tips and all of that. We show you 
maybe some, you know, suggest some videos that are maybe older that you had forgotten about, maybe hadn't gotten around to doing. Everybody has what they call their ginger wish list of paintings that they intend to do, but it can get pretty long and you can kind of lose track of what you thought you might like to do. So see how I'm doing this leaf? Just, this is all very, there's no globs of paint on here. This is all dry brushed and dry brushed on. And we have some great tutorials on how to do that. For instance, there's one on dry brushing is there's one of these ballet shoes this on YouTube that you might want to look at and try. Um, uh, that might be a good one. Okay, so see, there's a little bit of this. I want some lighter yellow right here. I'm going to wipe the brush off and kind of, again, too much paint. Let's try a little yellow, a little dab of it. Here's a question for you. Ginger, you have never mentioned if and when you change the water and how often. Um, that's a good question. Um, we have, you know, years ago, for, for, for the most part of my life, I would say, painting, but 99% of my painting life, um, I would get like an old recycled container or something from the house to put my water in. And, you know, um, I, you know, change it for every paint, obviously change it for every time you start painting, but it's a big bucket, so I didn't have to. And then Bob Ross invented this, um, I don't know if he invented it, but he sold them. I think you still get them. There's this screen, this wire screen. That, he has like four or five different kinds, and they don't rust. And they can go in a bucket of water, and you rub your brush on the screen. And then all the sediment falls down, so it keeps your water clean forever. But then I have here, can I show this real quick? I have a bucket like this, or I have a clean area, a... Um, a dirt, you know, it's dirty, medium, and clean. Three parts. Three parts. And I, I bought, when I saw that, it's the first time I ever bought a water bucket. I'm like, that's the one. And it is. They make a giant one, which um, I found not very useful. And then I really like this one. How's that? So, yes, I do. Um, In the reference photo, it does not have a tabletop meeting the wall. How do you make it look like a, the table ends and the wall begins so effortlessly without painting the table top? Well, in the, no, it doesn't, but you have to blend one together. This is where we're talking about the smudgies, right? The smudgies. You You've got to start smudging it, right? So you're, it's implied. And he did so much of that where he just implied things, um, and which is really quite tricky, actually, when you think about it. Um, now, what I want to do is just take some CAD red and uh, I think that dried, didn't it? And a little water. Go over this a little bit like that. There you go. That's it. See how that's kind of light and it's showing through? He did a lot of that, too, with this kind of thing. We didn't have time to do a lot of that today, but if you look at his reference, that's how he accomplished that. Kind of glazing over some lighter spots like that. Do you have come. to wait for the oil to dry to do that? Yeah. Man, it must have taken him months to do that thing. Well, it just depends. You know, they, they make a, I don't know what he had available back, way back then, but they do make a, um, um, oil painting products that will dry the paint quicker. You can buy those. And, and, but whether those were available for them, I don't know. You know, you just, times change. Well, yeah, even our materials have changed. Yeah, I'm the first one to want to try something new. If somebody's got a new <laughs> thing, I'm the first one who wants to try it. Okay, so I'm going to keep on going with these leaves because you can see where um, just playing with them, uh, just the colors, like, for instance, this one's got a little bit of blue on it, okay? And maybe a little bit of blue right here, and where else could I put that? Maybe in here like this. A little bit of that. So I've got enough of these colors mixed. Um, uh, red, grays, green. Yes, everybody remembers that. So if you put a little orange in there, you've got more of a, a gray, green uh, leaf than maybe even a burnt sienna would, uh, you know, change the color of this one. 
Okay, so that's 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 where the layering comes in. And the lights and darks. And this is where it all ha happens. So um just make sure that you've got make sure that you've got this that this is really curved like that. Maybe bring that up like that. Make sure you've got a very good um, round, even round bottom on this. There you go. There's our there's our lip of the um, the flower. Um, and it's, I mean, the trick for painting this, you guys. The trick for painting this is going to be. Um, where you um, uh, put your lights and darks um, and you have a cheat sheet he told you where to put it okay he's got like a little um, he's got some sort of little fun little flower right here um, this is just sort of the maroon and the blue like right there he's got some something right there He's got some stuff, and I'm just I'm just playing a little bit with some of it. All right, so that his leaf shows up. All his leaves come th through here. Kind of shorten some of that if I got it too long on his leaf. And then you just um, you don't think about it. Here I'm just I've got this on an iPad, so what I'm doing is kind of blowing it up. He's got like in here, let me just change brushes again, like down here on the bottom, here's our maroon color and a bit of zinc white. There's that maroon, maroon color. And I'm going to just do this, a little bit of the zinc white and that maroon color. Zinc white, here we go. Maybe a little bit of red in it. There we go. Now. See what I just did? Let's try a little white because the zinc wasn't doing it. This is titanium. Now look, because this is dried in here, there is some of this lighter color right here. See that? See how we're just tapping that in? So, and this is. Kind of, kind of a neat. You would, you have to look at the picture to really see it, but there it is. There's this right in front of this. It's lighter, and I'm just going to tap that in here. Kind of done different brush, but so even though it's all dark over here, um, This is my second coat of, you know, some of the dark colors. Put a little bit of blue with it. Now, right along here, he's got a kind of a he's got a line right here where the um, table is. But then he's got the red here. Remember we talked about that. There's that bright red. Now, take another brush, maybe a clean one like this. And smudge that in. Squish it. See what I just did? See, I'm squishing that in. It's not a hard line. This is very bright orange right here. And uh, the same thing. Now it's dried enough where I can do something like this. Wipe off the excess paint. Start dragging in some lighter colors up here. On, on this that wasn't there before. How about some lighter oranges right up in here now? I love the reds that he put in this painting. I just think they're awesome. So um, I need a darker green, so I'll just leave the red still on my brush. And I'm going to come up here like this 
and put this leaf in like that. And now uh, let's see. We know that's here like this. You know, we've got something there. And then we've got rinse that off. And then I've got some red flowers. So like right back up in here, I've got a red flower. And I'll put a little of this maroon with it for the shadow yeah, part maroon. of it. What's that called again? It's called it's called um it's called um permanent maroon, but it could be alizarin crimson. Or again, you want to make that wine color with your red. Naphtha crimson and um ultramarine blue will make it. Okay. Let's do another one over here. Here's another red flower. Right here, like that. Okay, you can put two back. And then here's this red flower in here, like this. It's kind of weird, but you know, I mean, I, I wasn't there to look at his flower bouquets. I'm just going <laughs> to have to trust that's what was there. Maybe it was. What's that brush you're using now? That's a little cast tongue, little cast tongue brush. Um, the cat sacrificed his tongue for us. I know, I know. So we know we've got some, we've got some um, stems coming up here. Probably more in the yellow and orange colors. But I don't want to, there's one coming through here too, but I don't want to, it's coming up through that leaf, but I need to have that dry. So this would be a really good time to dry. Maybe you'd like to do a drawing, John. Okie dokie. Okay. And I'm going to dry. Eventually. Let me do the downloadable first. Are you drying or am I? I'll wait till you're. All right. I'm drying. Yeah, I've heard that before. All right. Well, she's drying. This is the downloadable lesson we're doing this, this month. It's the one that's currently on sale. It's our one we're using for the giveaway for the drawing that we're about to have from our random YouTube random comment picker. And the secret word was goldfish. I brought this over earlier, save a little bit of time, and we're putting here goldfish. And we've got 52 people. So the winner of that particular downloadable lesson is Beth Mulligan. So Beth, if you would use to contact us and let us know that you're the winner of the downloadable lesson, we will get that to you. Are you back, McLean? Yeah, but while we're here, I want you to back out a little, but I want to show you some things that are coming up in the Academy. John has, did you show them the bulldog yet, which is coming up this week? I've had they no, seen go that. Grab them. John's going to show you that, but while he's backing out, check this out. I know some of you have, this is another one of our old ed artists, and this is one of the tutorials coming up this summer. And I, I, for those of you who like the, the our gals and the beautiful dresses, we think this goes with the collection. There's a beautiful uh, one there. And um, I've just, uh, and not, Stunningly gorgeous. not too hard to do either. Um, I think you'll be surprised. Again, so many different ways to paint things, and that's going to lead me to talk about some stuff in a minute. John's backing up one more time. Here's our uh, old dead artist who uh, painted this donkey. Love that's, that donkey. Uh, that donkey's got very impressionistic donkey. Totally different style than you saw the lady in the red dress or even what I'm painting today. There's a lot of different ways to paint stuff. And you may just be snack dab excellent at this, and then you try to do a little do something that maybe requires more dry brushing or different technique and you and it doesn't work sometimes you don't have the right materials like the other day i was trying to do a um a palette knife painting and i did not have the right size palette knife and it wasn't working and it wouldn't matter i did the, the palette knife was giant and um it was um it doesn't really matter what it was for there was a reason why somebody gave me some couple of palette knives and said what can you do with these and i couldn't do anything with those palette knives the size of the canvas I needed to work on. So 
you know, having the right tools is important. Having the right paints is important. And also understanding that your skill level will vary depending on where you're at, uh, you know, just, just in general on your art journey, but also uh, your understanding of different techniques. Because that's what we show you in the academy um, and like why we have so many different kinds of tutorials is because not everybody is good at everything, but you can get darn good at stuff where the point where you can master these different techniques and then wait till you see what you start painting on your own. You'll be surprised. It'll be your technique then because you'll know all these others. And it'll be sort of a combination, just like no two people's handwriting is alike. Yes. So that's that's so those are some things that we've got going in the academy. And here's the bulldog is being released. The French bulldog is being released this week. Yeah. Yeah, that was a commission piece that I did for a, a couple in Florida, and uh, the painting is on its way to Florida as we speak. But so, um, but there's our doggy, and um, I love his eyes, don't you? Yeah, so very expressive. They were very happy when we showed them the pictures of that. Yeah. So, anyhow, that's what we've got. I'm going to come back to our picture here. I'm just going to drag on a little uh, light here on the pot. There we go, like that. Oh, interesting, isn't it? How fast stuff like that works. So, yeah, that's the thing. You you, you know, uh, our videos, because one of the things we do is that, this comes up often too, is that one of the things we do when we do a video is we show you how my thinking is about how I decided and how I painted it. And a lot of artists don't do that. They'll just edit out the part that didn't work. We leave it in because we want you to understand that it happens to everybody. There are some times when you paint something that just kind of wasn't what you wanted. And how do you fix it? Is it fixable? Is this something you can do something with? And why didn't it work? And um, either design-wise or whatever, because somebody said that, well, they wanted to be a good designer. Well, you know, I have furniture in my house. That's really nice. And I'm a professional artist. So would you think that would qualify me to be a interior designer? No. No, a design is a whole other class, you guys. But you get a lot of design tips in my paintings. But we'll actually have a special design class at some point. Yes, John? Oh, yeah. And, and, but no, it's, a whole no other, it's a whole other thing. But there's some rules that you can follow. It's just like people say, I want to learn perspective. Well, there's just a thousand books out there on perspective. It's one of the most common things that people want to try to learn. And um, uh, and, and we want you to, you know, have that opportunity too, to, to learn that, right? But um, don't beat yourself up about it if you're not a design champion this week. Just know that you generally... Portraits can be put in the center of a picture, but generally speaking, um, uh, you want to kind of be, there's there's rules about where you put stuff, and you know maybe you'd like to comment a little bit on that, John. Well, you you have all kinds of different rules, and sometimes you, then you also have to know when you can break the rule, and it makes sense to break the rule. So. We are in the process and have been for way too long of working on a design painting design class. It's going to be for the advanced artists. Yeah, and yeah advanced I think artists only. If we get only. fully caught up where we want to be, we can then focus on that entirely and then get that whole class built. That's probably how we're going to have to do it. Yeah. So, um, yeah, and that's just exactly... Just trying to intermix our, our normal work with that. It just, it just wasn't working. It was, we well, the problem is that, that we had to change. It. We, the thing about doing anything online is that when the software updates, sometimes things will not update. We had to redesign our whole website. John had to uh, design our whole website because we were not... Uh, having um, the success we wanted with the updating and it adapting to the, the, the new changes. And you've seen that on your phone. Gosh, one of my friends, um, you know, had an iPhone and she just never bothered with the updates. 
perfectly good iPhone, but she didn't want to. And at some point, then she went to update, and they said, you waited too long, you can't update. Well, in John's case, he didn't wait too long. It's just that the site, the original site we had, the Academy Gallery site, uh, could not adapt to the... Um, to the changes. To the changes. That's what happened. It could, couldn't adapt to the changes, okay? So, which was a shame, but just the way it was, okay? There you go. So there's this. All right. So now this was fun. Now we're going to put on these odd little flowers. The little white guys? Yeah. And what they are is... Um, the little white guys. Uh, just You just need a little round brush and some white paint. Kind of roll it, roll your brush in it. Okay. And um, just figure out, I would say what you want to do is um, figure out where the top one's going to be. Maybe this is, so make a dot where you think they are. Okay, so you're not confused. One, so two, that way you won't make a pattern, too. That way if you look at it, you can see, oh, I've made too many in a straight line or something. Yeah, you don't make a pattern. There were some, let's see, that's one, two, then there was some here, here, and then I've got some where these leaves are here, here, here. He kind of made a pattern, but we won't, we won't tell. All right, so those <laughs> that's where we're going to put them. Okay, so that that's a good tip right there. So now the trick is you want to you just want to put the petals and leave a, like a little hole in the center. Okay, like that. That's that's as simple as they are. They're kind of rounded. They're not to a point. So you just sort of dab the brush here and kind of push it, and then you won't get a point on it. And just and this is where you can have some fairly thick paint. So you're going to go that way with it. And if you have to, just spin the canvas around, too. If you're, just, if you're having trouble going backwards, just spin the canvas around. There you go. I certainly would. You know, that probably might make it a little easier. And um, if you want to leave a little bit of the orange in the center, so come out from it a little bit. I mean, uh, I agree with you. I'm going to take a little yellow with that, too. There's a little bit of the yellow on some of these. Yellow oxide. Get a couple colors on your brush. I think these are very strange little... I'm not sure I get the flowers for the pot. I mean, I don't necessarily even have a clue what the guy was doing here with these odd little flowers. <laughs> and um, as if he was sending this in for personal art coaching, I'd have to ask him, what was there particular? Were the, the, did you find some weeds somewhere and just throw these? Where did these flowers come from? Because they're, they're a little odd. This one's kind of small up here. It doesn't say too much. Then he had the bigger ones here, the big bright ones here. Some of these need a couple coats. And that's the way he saw it. Well, yeah, I mean, but it's fun. I mean, I love that. I think what made this one so fun was the background and all this stuff. Don't you guys think so? Yeah, the background is very unique. And some of these flowers require a little... Um, Uh, let's just put a little yellow with them. Some of them have a few little colors with them. With the white. They're not just white. Don't be afraid to go back over them with something. These ones were touching. I kind of moved them down a bit, but they were touching. And then there's some one right here. Like happy flowers. Well, they're kind of happy, yeah. You know, and then there was like a, this one that had a little bit of orange in it. It was like over here, a little bit of red and orange. They're all, not all the same size either. Some are smaller than others. Okay, but there's one right there. And then some are brighter. So here's the, here's the white paint. This is layer two. You might have to do that with a couple of them. 
they're not going to show up the first time. But you can decide which ones you want to be more pronounced and which ones you don't. And then, um, and then he had, <laughs> honestly, I'm not making this up. Then he had some, I'm going to just come back to those, let those dry a little bit. Then he had over here, he had this dark green. We'll put some of that maroon color in it. He had this dark green. He had these little dark green. I didn't quite understand those myself. Oh, he had them. So I'm putting, you guys can leave them out if you want. I'm trying to be authentic. <laughs> little one right here and then something green against the wall. And of course, remember this one. Then there was something here like this. I'm trying to understand if this was wallpaper. I don't know, but he had them there. Or, um, or rogue, rogue leaves. Well, I I don't know. They had some. They had kind of like some yellow in the center of this, and uh, this one didn't, but those did. Kind of then a little bit of orange maybe in that. They're all kind of. And, you know, you may not want to put those in at all because you're going, I don't know, Ginger, I don't like that. And that would be okay too, right? But, um, so then you're, then we're asking, what else could we do to this? And I'm saying, this had to be large enough to be able to do a square, but, like, here's a, a red flower up here. Let's take a little bit of maroon and red. Say, so here's a little red, dark red flower right here. And then this one, I need to brighten up. And what happened to this one? We don't know. Something. This one, we needed a bigger flower right here. We had something up here, too. People are thinking, of, was it possibly that the dark spots on the wall are shadows from the flowers? Um, I don't think so. I don't so. think so. No. no. I mean, if you look at it, you know, you look at the original, there, it's definitely something on there. No, no. They're not, there's no dark. John, if you can... Feel free to flash the, um, feel free to flash the, um, the actual original for people to see, because we didn't print it out. So, you know, so you're kind of, you're just taking our word for it. This is here. Which well, is we our, wouldn't hot dog you. I mean, this is serious stuff. Hot, what did you call that? Hot dog? Hot dog you. you. Never, not hot dogging you. I never heard that expression. Oh, my. I've lived a sheltered life. You have. I, this has got some sort of leaf coming through here like that. Kind of in front of those. And. Uh, okay, let me show you the original here while she's just. Yeah, yeah. Just show, just show them the original, John. So that that is see. the original. As you can see, nobody knows what that. It looked like leaves. It's got to be wallpaper. It's definitely not shadows, though. Yeah. Well, this is one of those things where the artist felt like if it was in the picture, you should put it in. So many people <laughs> feel they're historians, not artists. I always say you already got a picture. Print it out. You, you know. know. Um, need a little bit of light right here on this top of this pot right here. that is right and then this comes back around like that and there was some um, oh yeah there's a little green leaf right here too look at that we'll put it right there and uh and then the 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 the, the catch the capture is to be um to uh, make sure that you've got the the darks in the right space place because that kind of defines what these leaves are. So I'm going back over those a little bit and um, and doing that. I might erase a space here. Can you do that? You can while it's still while it's still wet. You can. You ought to be able to do, still do that. I want to bring this up a little bit brighter right up in here. And uh, just 
come up here like this with something bright. Okay, we'd like to thank Catherine for the donation that came in through PayPal. Thank you very much, Catherine. Oh, Catherine, that's so nice of you. Thank you very much. You know, um, John and I really appreciate it very much. And incidentally, speaking of um, donations, we got in a few during the week, too. And um, I want to thank Judy. And who was the other one, John, that sent, sent us something during the week after watching this video, these videos? There was a couple others that came in during the week, remember? He's looking it up to see who sent us some. So we appreciate it. You might might look for a note from us. We try to do that if we can, if you if we can't announce you on the show. So here's, I'm gonna put some of that blue right there. There you go, see the little bit lighter color right there. And- Oh yeah, the other one was from Susan. Okay. I knew, I knew that there was somebody else that yeah. had sent something. And uh, I just wanted to, you know, make a point of thanking them. And let's see, I know, I know, see, I'm looking at the dark light. Now there's something, ooh, not that, that. there's something very dark right here. This is uh, right here, right here, under the pot, and then where this leaf is. I want to be that little area right there that's dark. See, because I, you see how I've created that shadow, and there's this one behind here, too. You made it very dark, yeah. And so I'm just uh, deliberately doing that, creating that shadow under there, and then under this under this leaf and let's see if I can't do more of this lighter color um, here okay there you go see see a little bit of that light just a light spot a little bit of maroon a little bit of orange see look at that right there just created a little bit of something that's lighter and uh, a little more intrigue well th you can't do this unless you're drawing in you can't really get this effect unless you make a point of drawing stuff and layering yeah and, and layering you gotta layer it. and i might exaggerate it a little bit here like that because i wanted that to be there but because gosh you don't you just love all the reds in this um in this background i guess no, we don't the have reds the... and the greens i mean this is a masterpiece um, and then, then what you have to do is come back and then, um, just retweak some of the white. All right. So you, you did the white flowers. Now you may have to come back and add the next coat and you don't have to do all the petals. Look and see which ones he did. That's the trick. You don't do all the petals. Maybe you just do a couple of the, maybe the tips of one like that. Uh, just a little bit like that. You come back, and this is called turning on and off the lights. And um, when and when do you do that? And where do you want people people's eye to look? These ones in the front were. Um, this is where I've got quite a bit of paint on the brush. And uh, it's a very strange little picture to me, but you know what? <laughs> um, I, I don't want to sound like I'm complaining. I'm trying to think that's sort of cute. That was interesting. And then there was a yellow thing right here that happened. Right like that. Put the yellow back. Because that's wet, see? You have to be kind of careful. There's a layer, a little yellow there. And there's a little bit of yellow in here. And, and do we have enough here? Now, when I'm talking to you, I'm also thinking to myself. I want to make sure I've got that rim here where the pot is and make sure I've got something underneath dark under here. Okay. And there still could be, quite honestly, there still could be some light going on. So the, the uh, right in here, the front of the pot. This is kind of front lit, I guess is what I would say. So it could be a little bit of something lighter right in here now that this is dry. Let's try a little yellow. There we go. 
Um, that looks a little better. Just, just because again, the curly stripe darker, but see that pot was sort of front lit. So I'm looking. I guess I'm looking at where else the. Um, what yeah, what yeah. do I want to see here? And what, as far what, as this what do you goes, think about removing that pencil from underneath the corner of your canvas. I could do that. Put it right here in my little pencil thing. Look at that. Did you see that? Did you see that? Oh, my little precious. Look at that. Ha-ha. How fun. You're so organized. So, this little leaf here is interesting. So, if I wanted to say this was more leaf-like, I might put a, something like that on it. Okay? Because <laughs> it... Yeah, no, you go ahead and laugh, but that's kind of what he had, right? And then I'll put a dark line next to it. Oh, that make me feel better. There, there, like that. And then I want a little bit of orange around the outside here, like in here, like that, around it. And uh, as happy as these little blobs of paint are over here, I got to tell you, I don't like them. Uh oh. I don't like them, you guys. I mean, they're there. You're welcome to put them in if you want. I don't like them. I bet they're going to be disappearing. I do not like them. I do not like them here or there. Or there. I don't like them anywhere. I'm taking them out. They're there in his picture, but they can, they can, you can be that much. But you can't be all of that. How's that? Yeah, that's better. <laughs> that's oh, really? That's better. better. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely better, because I mean they can show up a little bit, but they're just it's too much. And I'm darkening the, I do the wipe down on the guys. So those two at the top too. What's that? Those two at the top. Just push them all back. Yeah, I just I just didn't it's think just it, too much. It just to me it didn't add anything. And you know we always like to ask you say what well, do you want to ask you the question what can I take away and not ruin the effect because the effect is that the effect for me is these um. Are these um, the effect for me? Are these um, beautiful uh, red against the orange and the the rest of it? So let's lighten up something here. Let's lighten up something here. Uh, Again, we're just looking for sort of a pale blue green kind of turquoisey color. Kind of running out of room to mix, but that's all right. Halo green is a good color for that because you can. Just a few places where I want the eye to go here. So I'm going to lighten this leaf up right there. Just say, all right, let's lighten this up smudge that out so what are we kind of getting from all this today we're getting that we're going to smudge more yes yeah i'll be smudging and we're going to do a little bit more of the going to brighten up these colors a little bit in the front there's a question for you when doing a flower that's either turning to the left or the right the petals on the side in the direction should they be smaller or are they all the same size this is why you use um, references. Yeah. You have it to... really depends on your angle, how close you are. There's a lot of variables in that one. You, how there, big this, the flower we can't is. stress enough <laughs> while how important it is to use a reference. That we just can't. Google needs to be your best friend. Yeah. You know, like, for instance, somebody that today wrote me and was asking about some canaries we had done. And, um, and canaries? No, they weren't canaries. They were parakeets. And it's been so long since I saw the reference even. And I said, Google parakeets and look at them. See, what can you learn about it? If you're going to, you know, if you're going to do something like this, um, take a moment and Google the, um, Google what you're painting. Let's see, okay. Yeah, I think that's fun. I don't know about you, but I thought think that's that's I think that's really fun. And he has, where's my light orange here? Here's a. He's got. 
he had he had fun with all of this and see I want that well a really bright orange. Salvador has that really nice light bright orange. Here we go. Look at that. Okay. So I want to take some of that and just He's got a couple of these little flowers up in here like that. Just dot dotted up here like that. Just just different reds. I love the reds he put in this um this picture. I'm telling you what, you could layer reds all day long. And Until really the cows come home. You could absolutely layer the reds, but don't forget to add the light in the bottom of this here uh, on the get, get it light a little bit down there. I would say that would be one of the tricks you want to do. Um, don't forget that there's a good shadow right here next to this leaf. You want to make sure you have that there on this side of the pot where this leaf is, is causing that shadow. And um, I think even here there was a little bit of a shadow. I'm going to come it up this way, and I'll just dangle that more like that. There you go. What do you think? I think it's a masterpiece. So have you drawn for everybody? Have you nope. done this? We got the Salvador kit to go. All right. We have, we're going to draw for the Salvador kit. All right. And then we're going to tell you some important news when you come back. Oh. Did you want me to mute you? Yeah, I'm going to dry this. Okie dokie. All right, we're going for the Salvador kit. The kit this time will be the uh, full kit with the brushes, the palette, the whole the whole kit and caboodle, as it were. And the secret word is Salvador kit. Those are only available for the lower ninety, or sorry, lower ninety states, the lower forty-eight states. Due to the shipping constraints. We got 41 people, and the winner of the Salvador kit with all the goodies is Candy Boyer. So, congratulations, Miss Candy. Who won? Candy Boyer. Oh, congratulations. Absolutely. That's sad. Yes, absolutely. Candy, you're going to love it. If you don't have one already, uh, you're absolutely going to love it. Um, they're just, for, you know, John. Do the cat's meow. I'm just kind of darkening this shape of this leaf right there a little bit. I see that. Um, to just, I, I kind of lost the shape a little bit. And it's rounder in the front. I think the bugs ate mine a little bit too much here. It's rounder in the front than I made it. There we go. Come back up that way. Um, the... Um, the, the, as you guys know, uh, we're doing the workshop up there and up the there. retreat up there in the, <laughs> in the Pennsylvania. In PA. See. And so we will not have a YouTube show next Monday, but we will have one when I come back. Uh, well, no, we will have a, 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 a we will have one the following week and look for the YouTube Gazette about that. Okay. So, you know, do look for that and see which ones we're going to be doing because, we, like I say, we will have um, we will have it when we um, come back, but we won't have it uh, next week. And so, but, you know, there's so many wonderful, if you've been reading the Gazette, there's so many wonderful tutorials um, that um, we have on YouTube already that I bet you haven't seen them all. So, um so a couple of things you can do me a favor. You can share this one if you liked it. Hope you did. In the, um, uh, you know, just share it with a couple of friends, maybe three or four, ten. You know, share. doesn't matter if they pay or, or not. Just share. Just just share it, okay? And because that's really a fun thing to do. And um, I want a white. He doesn't have one, but I'll tell you what, you guys. I knew it. You knew it, didn't you? Yep. I knew that wasn't just going to sit there. It just, uh, it there's just needs to be a few more of these than he put. All right, I'm sorry. He just, I needed to balance them out. You, you know what I'm saying? Hey, we'd like to thank Sandy for the donation that came in through PayPal. Thank you, Miss Sandy. Oh yeah, thank you very much, Sandy. So uh, anyway, so we hope that uh, we're. Gonna, I'm looking forward to those of you who are coming to the retreat. Um, I, we'll I look there. forward to. We'll see you there. I look forward to meeting you, and we'll have some fun things to share. And be sure to. 
So be subscribed to our um, acrylic painting with Ginger Cook uh, uh, dot com. Uh, make sure you subscribe to our newsletter so that you get all the latest updates. And if we have fun stuff to share with you, we want to be able to do that. And uh, you can see as I'm telling you this, I'm adding. John says this is when everybody just leaves. They never stop to see the final stuff. And <laughs> I can't help it. I I see stuff and I want to change it. You know. Um, that's just how that's just how it works for me, right? Like for instance, I see that there's a something that went over this one too, a little leaf that went over that one. All right, I'm pretty happy with that. I'm going to go ahead and sign it using the Posca pens. Cinnamon tells me that she's found another brand of pens that she likes ever so much better than even Posca. Oh, she's going to give me the lowdown, and I will bring it back to you. So remember, smudge more, mm -hmm. glob less. Much that's, more glob less. Glass, glass, you it. know, that's a good thing to, to write down. And uh, layer. And you can always use a Posca pen. If you're not quite getting something yeah. white enough, you can always use a, the whitest stuff I've got is those one of those Posca pens. They're, They're pretty white, here. right? So anyway, hope you enjoyed these uh, these uh, fun little white flowers in, in um, the little pot. And um, we'll, we will look forward to doing some uh, future videos on YouTube, uh, not next week, but the following week. Oh, the week. secret word for next week? No, it won't be the next week one. We, we can't do a secret word because we won't be we'll here. Be we'll be able to do a drawing, right? But um, we may have a special contest going anyway, which will, will be announced in our Gazette, all right? Which we will, so look for that. We may have another photo contest for you guys. So you might want to be um, thinking about that. And the other thing is, is that uh, um, some of you have taken some really good photos. Okay, let me just bring something down like this. I know I said I wouldn't do anything else, but I wanted to just do like that. There you go. Um, and we're gonna have, if I'll read about the the photo contest for that from your photos what we've got going we we look for our gazette because that's coming soon so thanks for thanks for showing up thanks for subscribing thanks for the likes thanks to our mods thank you guys for all your support and um i always love hearing from you and if you thought this was a fun show let me know bye everyone bye Ginger Cook, the queen of color, with a blazing brush at the speed of light, and a blank canvas, and a hearty yes and yes. The queen of color, Ginger Cook, and her sidekick, John Little, teach you to paint with acrylics.